inventory is the base module then we have distribution modules sales modules then coming to the manufacturing so if we are the only in short we are giving the training for supply chain management manufacturing we want training so otherwise these are trainings for supply chain management different they charge something else and manufacturing they charge something else but we are giving this is our strategy from first onwards you know we are giving the training for all these modules it is integrated modules you know we can say in inventory purchasing order management also advanced pricing and coming to manufacturing we have bills of material as a costing module then manufacturing module work in process we call it as then we are integrating with the quality quality is the module again which is going to be integrated with the manufacturing module these are these are the modules we are going to learn so we have not yet started manufacturing other faculty has not started at manufacturing so only thing i don't think 90% has been completed so whatever it may be let us forget about because they are all having the personal problems and due to which i don't want anybody to suffer so that is the reason just i am taking care of these classes and i'll make sure that in case you want the previous classes also like we will take we will try to have a gist of all the previous classes like inventory purchasing hierarchies po hierarchies then we are going for you no know, sales we are about to start sales because that is a new module we are going to so let us see just a minute okay we are entering into the sales sales let us take for example let me give the gist of sales any company which is doing a business they should have sales otherwise there is no revenue what is the need of sales basically the company will be manufacturing the items if they are not into manufacturing if they are not into manufacturing then simply they'll be buying the pro buying the items and they sell the what are the items they bought it and they'll be maintained in the warehouse and those items will be sold to the customers in this process let me tell you two concepts there are two types of companies one is into manufacturing another one not into manufacturing if you are into manufacturing a company which does the business is not into manufacturing simply they buy the product they maintain the warehouse they keep the product in the warehouse then as and when required there will be an order from the customer against that order we are going to that business organization is going to ship the item to the customer and payments will be received if the company into company is into manufacturing then they manufacture the product there is an end product finished good we call it as that finished good has to be shipped to the customer that means you should have an order with respect to the customer so that item will be sold to the customer means there is a manufacturing and without manufacturing also we have the business without manufacturing if you have the business that is called trading if you have the manufacturing of course that is called as manufacturing business either way the sales is common that is the reason if you go to any company if you are going for any interview or if you are going for some opportunities supply chain management is common for any company which does the business when there is no supply chain management there is no requirement of any business first of all supply chain management which does the which brings the business to the company without that there is no requirement of finance even if there is a money that is coming inside then only we would require finance to manage that then only trial balance comes what are the sales what are the profits losses everything will be coming based on the sales so in this process without having sales there is no business at all that is the reason most of the opportunities will be common for supply chain management guys manufacturing of course less than supply chain management 
because I told you the company itself either into manufacturing or into trading that's it so either way it is trading or manufacturing sales is common but not manufacturing but if you have the knowledge of manufacturing when you are claiming that I have an experience of four to five years then they would expect the knowledge of manufacturing modules as well the integration is required distributions sales all these modules to be integrated with manufacturing when you are talking about manufacturing a finished good will be manufactured from the raw materials and those raw materials we are not manufacturing if you take Tata motor whereas it is manufacturing the car whereas we have different items which are already bought and kept in the warehouse as and when required you are manufacturing the car then tires bearings clutch plates engine so you have engines different you know different manufacturers we are all Tata Motor is buying the items and keeping in the warehouse and it is good it is assembling all the raw materials all the sub assemblies or components or components raw materials which are nothing but the items which you are going to buy from the supplier you would require bearings tires engines all these items if you take bearing as an item tire as an item engine is also an item but items are different bearing is a raw material for Tata motor if you take the manufacturer of bearings SKF is a prominent company which manufactures only bearings if you take the item finished good item for SKF company the finished good is bearing whereas for Tata motor the bearing is raw material whereas SKF for that raw materials will be ball bearings there are some balls and on top of that there is a ring and that ring also without groove and which is having some work some work has to be done on that particular ring metal ring so that the groove will be placed and after that will be incorporating the balls in that groove then only that bearing will be formed for SKF company the finished good is bearing whereas the same bearing becomes a raw material for Tata motor means the company which manufactures the end product is into manufacturing and their end product finished good is that particular product whereas the same product will be a raw material let us take another example Tata motor is manufacturing different cars models which is having each car is having engine that engine can be Fiat engine we have many engines if you take Tata vehicles engines are not Tata why then what's happening in the company the real fact is they are going to buy all the engine all the engines from the companies parent companies like Fiat Honda like that they'll be having if you take Mahindra Hawk engines I'm a Hawk we have all these items coming from different companies and they are maintaining the stock and as and when required they are going to assemble as a part of assembling they are bringing all the raw materials not only raw materials but also the sub assemblies like engine engine is called not raw material it is called as sub assembly why if you take the engine you have many items in the engine bolt nuts we have cylinder piston crank we have different items each one is a raw material all together we are forming one sub assembly and that assembly they bought it Tata Motor has bought the item from the vendor and kept in the warehouse as and when there is an order from the customer they are going to fit that engine into the car their end product is car the car is the finished good whereas we have raw materials we have sub assemblies components 
and there are some services keep in mind tata motor may manufacture they might manufacture cars but some services they cannot provide let us take teflon coating is the one to be performed on the each car but the teflon coating is not available in the factory then what happens tata motor manufactures the car and keeps the item in the sub inventory sub inventory then that item has to be sent to to the third party so that the third party will perform the teflon coating and tata motor brings the item back to the warehouse then they will call the customer then they deliver the item to the customer this is what the getting the service from third party third party is called outside processing outside processing so in this process we have the manufacturing what are the manufacturing you are doing and the product is getting inventorized in that particular sub inventory from that sub inventory we are going to make an order through which we are going to ship the item to the customer as a part of sales when you ship the item to the customer customer has to pay when he pays you are going to receive after receiving revenue is getting generated then profit and loss should be calculated now let us go into the concepts let us come to the oracle application now we have the order management which is meant for sales module now we have different menus orders and returns negotiation sales agreements and we might be having many menus and functions it doesn't mean that we are going to use all the functions all the menus keeping in mind i'm sure that you will be keeping an experience of 3 to 4 years or 5 years it depends up upon your capabilities end of the classes you know after when you reach to the end of the classes then we have to decide how many years of experience you are you are going to keep so based on that you should project yourself integration with the manufacturing or without manufacturing or independently supply chain management only that's how we are going to plan now we have orders this order and returns orders and returns in which we have different functions order organizer will be used for finding the orders based on different parameters like how many orders we have already with some customers or what status is it closed is it booked or is it invoiced is it shipped or awaiting shipping we have different statuses we are going to see that what are different statuses of orders and what is required to order if customer places an order already you know what is purchasing if tata motor is the company there is a customer of tata motors customer approaches tata motor how he should approach by this time because you know purchasing how customer approaches customer the person who approaches to tata motor becomes customer when they have an order in the tata motor but tata motor sales people they didn't create any they haven't created any order with respect to customer then customer how he approaches to tata motor i have given example in the initial classes if you want to buy a laptop what you are going to do you are finalizing your requirement and you are coming to the vendor and you are placing an order what is the order that you are placing that is nothing but purchase order that is nothing but purchase order means there will be confusion for every person 
how can I say whether I am raising purchase order or sales order? First of all, remove the confusion. Whenever we are working on the system, if I open order management, that means we are selling. If you open purchasing, if you open purchasing, we are at purchasing now. That means we are buying, we are purchasing, that's it. Always system meant for first person. If you are working on the system, keep in mind, if you are at purchasing responsibility, that means we are buying. That means we are working in Tata Motor and Tata Motor is using the Oracle application and as a buyer, I am going to use the purchasing super user. That's it. Simple. So if I switch to order management, now there is no confusion because I am using say order management which is meant for sales means I am selling something. When I am selling means I am representing Tata Motors. Tata Motor is using Oracle application. If I am going to use order management means already customer has approached with purchase order. Customer approaches because he wants the item. So he approaches always with the purchase order. Whereas we are selling the item, so we are not concerned about purchase. We are not buying from the customer. We are selling the item to the customer. That's the important thing here. So when you are using order management, that means we are selling the product. That's it. Means with what document he approaches. Based on that document, we are going to have a sales order. That's it. When you are trying to use order management, that is talking about sales order, not purchase order of the customer. Similarly, if I open purchasing, then what happens? I am going to enter purchase order, means I am going to buy. It's immaterial for us what the second person is using. Second person might be using some Seabell, some system. Seabell, JD Edwards, PeopleSoft, Oracle, Oracle or SAP. What of the system he, the second person uses? Let us forget about. We are concerned about our system only. This system, this system will be used by the client. Who is the client? If we are the consultant, so of course we are not using the application. We are implementing the system. We are coming out of the system. We are coming out of the company and we are going for another project. I told you initially what is our role. Remove all these confusions first because why I am pointing out this Initially, when I started my job as a consultant, I have, you know, I had this doubt. So how can I decide whether order management or purchasing, whatever the responsibility you are using, everything is happening in one system. How should I decide like whether I am buying or selling? It is very simple. If you are talking about you, you are the first person. And this system meant for you. You logged into the system means you are representing that company. You are not a consultant. Forget about that. First of all, you should be good in transactions. Then only we become consultants. Let's treat, let us treat ourselves. We are working in some client, working for some client and we are using the application to what extent, to what, you know, extent you can use this system. You should learn the system thoroughly. And what kind of transaction? It doesn't mean that uh, every transaction cannot be done by one user. Keep in mind. So we are consultants. We are learning all the transactions. It doesn't mean that we are going to train all the transactions to the one user. No. If you take sales process, what are the process we are learning? This process will be completed by 20 persons. 20 people. Means somebody creates quotation. Somebody creates sales order. Somebody reserves the item, somebody picks the item, somebody ships the item, before shipping you somebody has to deliver the item means they have to prepare a documentation means a delivery note should be there based on that the item to be shipped to the customer in the process. We have different documentations. Sales order is the first one. Are we reserving the item? Yes. Who reserves? Inventory guy. Who meant for? Who is meant for? Who's, who, who is concerned about the items to be reserved against a particular customer. If you are asking to reserve item against a customer, then there should be a document. 
That means you have to raise a move order, a request to the store to reserve against a customer. That's move order. We are requesting to the inventory guy. Being a sales guy, I am requesting inventory guy to reserve the item against a customer. Customer means order. There is a sales order which is representing a customer. When he reserves, he transfers the item. Because move order, we have the two types of move orders. What is that? One is move order transfer, another one is move order issue. You might be knowing as a part of inventory concept. Move order transfer, which transfers the item from one location, one sub inventory to another sub inventory. Whereas move order issue, item will be issued from the sub inventory to outside, not to the another sub inventory. When you are transferring from one sub inventory to another sub inventory that is called sub inventory transfer when you are issuing the material from one sub inventory to outside which is move order issue whereas move order transfer item is simply getting transferred from one sub inventory to another sub inventory but still the item is existing in the inventory organization there is no effect accounting effect item is not depleted when there is no depletion there is no quantity decrease. When there is no quantity decrease, the quantity multiplied by the unit cost, that much value to be depleted, but not depleted. Why? Because item is just displaced from one area to another area, but all the inventory value is same. So these are all differences between move order transfer and move order issue, which is very important question. And why, we, why should we use move order transfers when we are going to use that? When you are going to use the move order issue. Similarly, we have sub inventory transfer. The difference between sub inventory transfer and move order transfer. These are all the concepts we are going to use as a part of sales. Let us see how it is going to be. Now, Let me open the notepad. This is one of the activities, you know. Every time, don't make use of book and pen. This is one of the important things. I have seen many consultants. When he asks the consultants who comes to on-site to give a session to the user community, he opens the system and he keeps the book beside him. And whenever he is working on the Oracle applications, and somebody creates purchase order or sales order and he keeps tracking the order numbers on the paper. Don't do that. Everything should be visible to the customer because we are giving the demo. All are sitting in the conference room. What you are writing on the book might be different. It should be visible to the customer. So whatever you are going to do, you have to do on the system itself. This is the basic thing. That is how we analyze. We assess the knowledge of, you know, real-time experience of the candidate. So, what actions we are performing, that is also very important. Keep in mind. So, in this process, like, let us go to <coughs> application. We have the orders. I told you, orders and returns, it is a menu. Let me open order and order organizer. <coughs> Okay, so this, is, this is the order organizer. This order organizer meant for searching the orders. Searching the orders. How you are going to search? If you know the order number, existing orders, yes, you can find it. You can find by date. I want the orders which are created, which have been created during these, these particular dates. You can enter date from and date to. Okay. You want the status by, by status. You know, we have different statuses. Very important. The statuses are very important. See, when we are talking about statuses, there are two types. One is order header. Another one is line status. We have two types. Sometimes what happens, that field may not be visible here. That means it is hidden. 
if you want to bring that field to this area and you don't want freight carrier instead of freight carrier something else is required now let us see how to bring that see in the line information there is a field status but where is that I don't know it is not visible here but in the header I can see status but it talks about header status not line status header status might be booked line status might be closed it's possible. so always orders having two types one is order order is having different status in the header and having another status in line we have order header information what is header what is line we are going to see now whenever you want to see the existing orders we are trying to use we are going to use this order organizer we have not yet created any order let us see what are the orders have been created for this month let us take from April 1st to till today for you it is 15th for us it is 14th only still okay now let us find it will ask you this query could take long time do you wish to continue yes how many orders have been created during this month let us see two orders there are two orders one is booked another one is entered that is the use of order organizer now you see in the bottom you have summary and lines summary it is talking about order number customer name status and we have some info information but it won't show what is the item what is the quantity see there is a customer PO this is the PO number of customer it doesn't mean that we are going to prepare the PO in the system no we are selling the item customer approaches with the customer PO he might be having some PO what is that number against that PO we are going to create a sales order why because we are going to sell the item to the customer by creating a sales order to create a sales order I would require the purchase order from the customer that's what but whatever the document he creates we won't track in the system this system meant for tracking our transactions not the customer transactions or vendor transactions when I call vendor that means we are going to buy something when I call customer that means we are going to sell something to the customer first understand the business terms customer is different vendor is different customer who wants to buy the item from us vendor from whom we are no from the vendor we are going to buy the item we are selling to the customer we are buying from the vendor keep in mind now we have two orders first before going to the new order how to make use of order organizer that's what we are going to understand this is the order number and we have the details if you go to lines I'm clicking lines you can see I'm clicking on lines when you're going for lines see we have the first order if you go to summary see our cursor is there at first order so if you click on lines it will show you the lines related to the first order that's it when you click on this then if you click on lines it will show you the lines related to it is entered only it is showing only book orders okay so it's simply entered might be not having any line so that is the reason it is not showing we will see now <coughs> summary and lines let us open this order let us understand first then we are going for new order this is order number this is order number let me take whenever you want to track something you have to make use of notepad this is the sales order okay now I want to open keep cursor on that and click on open which opens the sales order 
this sales order this portion is called header this is also header whereas if you click on line items that then you can go into the line details what are the items what are the quantity what are the price what are the request date what are the schedule ship date everything will be there and the book order button is disabled why because the order is already booked that you can see in the status order header is having a booked status whereas line status let us see line status it is also booked sometimes it might be different how it is simple okay now let us understand first order this is customer name when you select the customer from the list of values okay this is the customer okay when you select this customer from the customer master we are going to get the details of ship to location bill to location and everything so we are not entering all these fields the first question is in interview are you going to enter all the fields no then what are the fields you are entering you are filling the order by entering certain fields only first one is customer the moment you select the customer from the list of values all the remaining fields will be selected for example let me take this customer i'm going very slow because it is first class from my side so you so that you will be comfortable for one day in second day i'll go faster so that our tempo matches so this is the customer name and we have the details this is customer number customer po and we have ship to bill to bill to means where you want the invoice customer we have to send an invoice against that we is going to pay ship to location where he needs the item that we are going to sell the item to the customer right that means we are going to ship the item to the customer location that location detail this is what and this is bill to where you have to send the invoice means there might be a case of having different locations as ship to and bill to very important question can a customer have different locations as bill to ship to yes the purpose of having different locations is it's very simple a customer is having different locations why should we have different locations if you have only one location billing also to the same location invoice means that is billing is nothing but invoice now you want the item also at that location so ship to bill to become same so let us see now then what else is required order type date order price list which price list we are going to use from which price list we are going to get the item price we are selling the items to customer because we are having the sales order means what are the items you are entering that item should have a price and that price is coming from certain price list and we are as a company company should maintain a price list and what is the price of that item in that particular price list that's what we are going to see then sales person of course then status what is the currency and total order and everything then coming to the details payment terms definitely you would require payment terms why it doesn't mean that we are going to have a sales order with the customer that means on the same day he is going to pay he is not going to pay today based on the payment terms 60 days means what today you ship it you expect the payment within 60 days that's it we are not going to get the money by today that is what we call it as credit customer that is where the question comes what kind of customer is a credit customer cash customer what is the difference between credit customer and cash customer is very simple credit means it takes the item he pays the amount 
after some days. How many days? We give the limit. That is 60 days. Can be 30 days. Can be immediate. If he is a cash customer, it should be immediate. And so we have the payment terms here. So all these payment terms should be defined in the system coming from the app, coming from the finance. So they define all the payment terms that will be available in the list of values. What terms you are going to apply? Is it 30 days, immediate, 45 days or 60 days, 90 days, no charge or we are giving the credit with charge or without charge and for 30 days we are charging 2 percent days, 1 percent days without charge. That's what we have different terms. Okay. So warehouse from which warehouse we are going to ship the item. Warehouse. What is warehouse? It is nothing but a distribution center or your manufacturing unit or your trading center. I told you if the company is existing in one city, let us say a company is existing in Detroit city. Detroit is very famous for motor industry. Every company will be there in Detroit. So they will be having a manufacturing unit and they will be having distribution centers in different cities coming to US. Okay. Now, if you are shipping from Detroit, then it should be Detroit. If you are shipping from the warehouse related to New York, then it should be New York. Like that. We have different manufacturing units, distribution centers in different locations. And what is that location? What is that warehouse? And that warehouse we are going to ship it. From that warehouse we are going to ship it. What are the different warehouses we have? All these are inventory organizations. We were talking about organization structure. What is the topmost company business group? Below that we have ledgers. Below that we have legal entities. And we have operating units below that. And operating units are having multiple distribution centers or inventory organizations. Those nothing but, you know, that distribution center or manufacturing unit or inventory organization or a warehouse. Those are nothing but these. That's it. And we have ship method. We have methods, you know. What kind of? Are you going to ship by truck or road transport, rail transportation, flight, cargo flight? Flight terms. Are you going to pay? Or company is going to provide? Or it should be prepaid, postpaid? After reaching the end destination, like we will have our own truck. We load our truck with the item because based on the payment terms, he is going to pay. He is going to pay within 60 days, and we are making use of our truck. We are going to ship the item to the customer. Our truck goes to the ship to location of the customer, then delivers the item. There you charge the transportation charge as well. That is called freight. Freight charge. We are going to add it. So this is what freight terms. So there are certain terms. Okay. So after boarding, you deliver the item to the customer ship to location. After reaching safely to the location, customer inspects the item. He accepts the item. Then he is going to pay whatever the invoice for all the items. Not only invoice, but also freight charge as well. So that's what we are going to. Now, coming to lines, let us understand first of what is order. Order, whenever we are going for sales, we are selling the items. So customer would require items. What kind of item he would require? What item he is referring, definitely we will be having an item in the inventory. And that item you have to select. And quantity, unit of measures, yes. It doesn't mean that with what unit of measure you are selling, it's not necessarily a primary unit of measure. What is the concept of primary and secondary? By this time, because you are good in inventory, so don't forget the inventory, inventory concepts. Inventory is very base module and which is common for sales, common for sales, purchasing and manufacturing. If you are losing the concept of inventory, that's it. You are losing the concepts of every module. Be strong in inventory, then you can answer any question related to any other modules mainly into supply chain management manufacturing now what is unit of measure this is secondary or primary then what is the difference between primary and secondary you should know first see with what unit of measure I am selling it doesn't mean that whatever the unit of measure I entered here it is square meters 
or each ea meant for each it is, is it square meter the item if you you are, you are buying clothes you are buying clothes measured by meters similarly you are buying area land that is measured by area means square meters or square yards you are selling one yard how many quantities how many yards 100 yards 100 square yards you are buying a plot if the company is selling the plots item can be land also here we are selling something else so what unit of measure of course so many you know some some square meters together or some square feet or square foot forming one square yard whether you are selling in square foot or square yards square meters or acres or cents these are all if you have the item of land land is plot the plot is an item if the real estate company if you go to a ranky or any company which is using ERP their item will be land how they are going to quantify the land it is by unit of measure what is the unit of measure for that item is it square meter square foot square yard cents or acres sometimes guntas in our local language we have guntas right so we have to define those all the unit of measures in the system those are called one unit of measure can be primary but remaining can be secondary but you have the relation between primary and secondary the best example is kilometers meters centimeters millimeters we have miles now tell me bring the relation between all these unit of measures but whereas the primary can be only one whereas other unit of measures are called as secondary only now coming to our primary unit of this example my primary unit of measure is while defining the item I have the primary unit of measure as kgs I measure the item by kgs I am selling iron product iron product I have channels channel sections I sections simply we have rods tubes we have different items but we measure the item by weight then we are going to sell the item to the customer in the process what is the unit of measure i said primary is kgs what are the item you take if you go to inventory if you go back to your inventory and see the quantity how many items are existing how much quantity of you know items existing in the inventory that you can see by only primary it's a very important question. Keep in mind what is the difference between primary unit of measure and secondary unit of measure? What is primary and what is secondary? The primary unit of measure that you are going to indicate in the item master, with that unit of measure, we are going to measure the item in the inventory. Always your on hand quantity. Your on hand quantity will be shown with your primary quantity only, primary unit of measure only. But what is the use of secondary? If I say cages, I have grams, I have milligrams, I have tons, metric tons, I have tons, quintas. What is quinta? Thousand cages. Sorry, hundred cages. What is ton? Thousand cages. Convert it to grams. Thousand grams equal to one kilogram. Convert the gram. We have milligram. So, we have different unit of measures, but there is a relation between primary and secondary. Primary can be only one, whereas secondary can be many. But we have the relation between primary and secondary. In what manner you are going to use? Either you can sell the item by primary or secondary. It's up to you. I am keeping the items in cages in the inventory. But while selling, I will sell by tons or quintas. Yes, you can enter. This is what the use of unit of measure. Selling price. This is coming from price list. No need to bother. And we will we will see what is price list in advanced pricing module. Okay. And request date by which date? Schedule ship date. Schedule ship date means by what date you are going to ship it. If I want to ship it by 30. So this is how like we, we do it all this process.
okay now this is how like we'll be having all this data how we are going to enter the items that's what we are going to see now system is somewhat slow okay now so this is how this is the basic information and after that we have multiple tabs here pricing what is the price list and what is the quantity what is the price that comes what is the extended price means multiplied by unit price with the quantity okay that brings the extended price and what is the price list we are going to use so those details will be coming from this tab and whereas we have shipping it's very important and which organization is receiving organization or which warehouse we are going to use so it is something it is internal you know if you go to orders okay it's a kind of kind of an order and whereas we have receiving organization means what is receiving organization what is warehouse it's very important in the sales order always if you ship some item some items from one branch one warehouse to another warehouse that another warehouse is nothing but receiving organization whether the shipping organization will be having a warehouse okay now let us take it is the receiving organization of course we are going to uh, first of all receiving organization means internal we are going to see what is internal companies to internal sales we are transferring from one organization to another organization and we are selling to the external customer we want first of all the important thing is external customer then only we go for internal sometimes we have different order types you know we will discuss all these like when you are getting the item from third party and you are shipping the item to the customer we have different scenarios we are going to see that first of all let us understand what what is the kind of order see here if you can see that in the shipping tab we have source type which is very important you can see the source type as two one is external and the one is internal what is external what is internal this is very important question based on this the order type is different what is order type we have different order types simply is customer is approaching we are selling the item to the customer because we have the stock in the warehouse sometimes what happens you know we will not have the stock then what happens we will check other branches whether other branches are having the stock or not if other branch is having we refer to other branches and we ask other branches to ship the item to the customer sometimes what happens we won't maintain the stock of that particular item in our warehouse then what how we are going to have sales with respect to customer yes you might have seen you go to something you go to some computer center you want to buy a laptop you place the order even though he is not having the stock he will ask you to wait for some time so that he approaches to another vendor and says i have a customer and he needs this laptop i think you might be having a stock let me have that item and how much you want how much commission you want he takes the item he pay something 1000 he adds that 1000 to the item cost and he comes back to you and he gives the item to you and after that you pay something and he takes that amount and he pays back to that vendor that's it it is a simple example that means you are getting the item not from your store you are getting the item from another store of vendor some some vendor store that means you are approaching vendor when you are approaching to vendor to get a laptop that vendor won't believe you first of all simply you should place an order what is that order that is purchase order because you are literally buying the item and the same bought item you are selling to the customer with some some more money so it is in the process you know when there is an external that is the meaning of external you are not maintaining the stock in the inventory you are not maintaining the stock in the warehouse you are not maintaining in the inventory when our customer approaches if your source type is external means you are approaching to the vendor you are approaching to the vendor 
then you are buying that item and you are asking that supplier to ship the item directly to the customer ship to location that's what external means that is what we call it as drop shipment order that is order type we are going to discuss that internal what is internal it is very simple we have the stock we are going to ship that's it over there is no question normally sales what items you are keeping in the store the same items you are going to sell then you are going to use the sales orders with internal source type whereas external source type will be used when you are not maintaining the stock but still you want the shipment to be done then you are asking another vendor you are asking third party to ship the item directly to the customer for that you would require a purchase order with the third party that is what we call it a drop shipment first let us learn what is a simple order what is standard order then we will go for it ok now source type is actually this is a very important you know it's very important question what is source type what is the otherwise simply they ask the questions like this what is whenever you are having the sales what is source type can be external or internal this is the answer what is the external what is the internal external is nothing but drop shipment order internal is standard sales order that's it what is drop shipment sometimes the question might be different what is drop shipment you have to tell it's a part of sales whenever a customer approaches for certain items and the company will not company may not maintain the stock but as and when the customer approaches the company approaches to third party vendor to get the item whereas you won't receive the item back to the stock but still you can suggest the vendor to ship the item directly to the customer that is shipped to location so that in the vend with the vendor you will have a purchase order with the customer you will have a sales order customer pays to you whereas you pay to you pay to the supplier this is what drop shipment that's what we are going to see down the line don't be confused first okay if you don't understand external and drop shipment let's forget about let us first learn what is same simple sales order we are going to discuss anyway what is drop shipment what is internal what is internal sales order let us forget about internal and external both we are going to discuss standard sales order then let us forget about this then go to main tab our important thing is what item quantity price and request date schedule ship date and what is the status of the line that's what important now this is what sales order and after that this is called header other tab line tab we are going to book the order then status changes and you may have order header status might be different can be booked always always booked before that you entered okay you might have seen the back side we have two orders right one is entered only let me open this it is entered only why because you have not booked if you go to lines let us see There is no item. So it just entered, entered headers and he left over. Somebody has created this order like this. Nothing has been entered. Okay. This is order information. So we'll be we'll be having ship to location, customer location for customer first of all, and with the customer we will have ship to bill to, and after that what is order type, what is the price list, what is the currency, and we have price flight terms, payment terms, warehouse, then line items what item you are going to sell all these things we are going to see now let us see I will try to create one order freshly okay let me take certain item I want finished good sales I want certain finished good item to be sold to the customer let us see for that I want to take a finished good item Code. I don't want to take any raw material. I'm not going to sell the raw material item to the customer. I'm going to sell the finished good item. Let us take the real time scenario. Now let me go to let I want to take the finished good item 
and if you want to take the finisher wood item code first of all what kind of items are manufactured let us see I want to see this is the organization my manufacturing plant is let us say one organization that is manufacturing Sital manufacturing organization if you go to Sital manufacturing then I will try to find out one job or probably after the after learning the manufacturing you will come to know this don't forget you as of now you forget about this activity but I want to know that what is the item code I want to find out that's it I want this item I this is the assembly final assembly I'm taking this item only thing is to take this item code I went to manufacturing uh, whether this manufactured item you know manufactured or not which is closed means it is manufactured that is the reason I am taking this finished good item now simply I am forgetting about I am forgetting about manufacturing I am switching over to order management now going back to I am going to create a sales order let us take okay customer let me take a customer this is the customer I will take a customer you can search by customer search by the customer from the list of values if you know the customer I can directly enter the customer the moment uh, the moment you enter the customer name and press tab can you see that everything has been filled this is when first important question is are you going to enter the order by entering all the fees no then how you are entering the moment you entered the customer everything has been defaulted how it is getting defaulted this is called defaulting rules this is called defaulting rules what is defaulting rules defaulting rules is the functionality is a kind of quick entry you know you know you might have defined the item master you are applying a template right what is the use of template copy template it's simple activity you are copying whenever you are defining an item in item master you are going to tools and copy from and you are applying a template as finished good or purchased item or service item or expense item configured item a2 item p2 item so what is this template the template is having all the attributes enabled or disabled so that whenever you apply the template all the relevant attributes will be enabled and the respective attributes will be disabled otherwise what happens you have to go to each tab and enable or disable that respective how many attributes are there more than 300 so the more than 300 clicks are required but it's simplifying your life in defining the item master with one shot that's what copy from certain template similarly this is what we are copying from the template that is what we call it as defaulting rules okay now the moment I enter this customer everything has been defaulted this is hip to and bill to this is coming from the customer master I will show you the customer master as well who is going to define a finance receivables guys are going to define the customer master I will show you how this customer has been defined I will show you Auto type. This is linked to this customer, so it is coming default. But auto types we are going to define. This is a very important concept. We will see in the setups. Okay, how to define auto types, and the price list. How to define? We are going to see. Salesperson from the list of values we are going to select. Currency. What currency we are going to use for the sales? Payment terms coming from again customer. It is the default one. Freight terms. This is the one. Standard. Tax. Then going to lines. I want this item. Copy that. I am entering the item. Press tab. If you want to know the details of items, you know how much quantity is existing, how much quantity is there, or do you are required to manufacture, or already there is a stock, can I confirm the order by immediate, you know, like that you can take an action like availability, click on availability, it will show you like if you let us see first of all let us fill the items quantity how much quantity I would require let us say around one or four items
yards why do you meant for yards so this is nothing but you see it is a kind of a fabric when you buy something sarees or blankets those are measured by areas is a square meter like that similarly here yards yards means it's, it's a kind of length i think yards is nothing but length okay but i don't want to use yards i want to use rules provided if you have something like so yards we have yards okay yards fine it's meters and you want you want to use anything else like you want to use by meters or inches it's up to you you can use the moment you say inch see 104 yards you are going to sell or 104 inches you are going to sell i want to sell 104 yards only then what is the relation between yards and inches why we are getting all these unit of measures you know that means this yard is having relation with all these unit of measures these are all secondary primary might be something what is primary? If you open this item master, then you will come to know what is primary. Primary might be yard. And you want to sell it in foot or centimeters or kilometers length because yards measuring is not yard is nothing but square yard is area, but yard is length only. Square meter is area, but meter is length only. Keep in mind. Okay. Now, this is the unit selling price. Now, now, Schedule ship date. I want to ship this item by month end. Okay. Now, I want to book the order. Book it. Some message is coming. Okay. What is this? No data found in baggage. Oh, he holds for procedure. Well, it holds for our stride. Okay. So, okay. Okay, let us take the order number first. The order number is 100362. Okay, let me take. SO number is 362. Okay. Now close that. Save. It's not opening. Okay. Let me open the sales order. How to open the existing orders? F11, give the number. What is the number? 362. Okay. Booked. We don't know. Sometimes some errors will be coming. We don't know the reason why. Let us see. Order has been booked. Let me enter the item. If you get the same error, we will see. Item is this. We enter. Quantity is not four. Then I want schedule ship date by. But today, let me take. Is it allowing or not? Okay, it's something is. Close this. No issues. Now let me take one thing. I will really log in one minute. Sometimes we won't understand the issues. Let me open the application by clicking any functions. Okay, let me open bills of material. Okay. Now, let me to 
let me go to the auto management okay let me open some orders order organizer created in the month of April let me show you this is April 1st okay to till today click ok click ok find yes ok now let us take uh, something this order open let us see what kind of order it is Okay, we have the item yards okay closed okay let me take this item item is this okay let me see shipping is it internal okay this is the warehouse we are going to ship it okay now let me take this item now sales order I'm going to create I have to select the customer The moment you check with the customer, everything will be filled. And after that, I'm coming here. Item quantity. Okay, this item is not in the okay fine we have let me take this one save it okay so we're getting the same error let me take So it is written order. Okay, let us forget about this. We will learn later like returns. I want to create. This is it. Copy. item this is a customer okay now I'm creating sales order by selecting the customer then I'm going to line items item I'm going to enter the item This let me take price list in order in domains. Okay, rows fine. Then save the record first. Oh my god, this server post right.
what we can do is let me go into this error later on but right now to show you the scenario you won't you won't face this issue in your system anyway so here only thing is okay let me try with another order first find out the status booked and order date from Okay, go into the line statuses. Okay, we have all these orders. Okay, let me take this. This is the order, okay. The SO number is this and open so we'll enter the customer then ship to location build to location then order details other details line items we are going to line items and we will have this item same item I think yeah the item is same customer is different I think Customerize this copy and then we have the line details then we have to book the order the after booking the order the status changes to awaiting shipping if it is not awaiting shipping if it is booked if it is booked then you have what you have to do is we have to make sure schedule ship date is entered if not and right click on this right click on this then progress the order when it is booked always progress the order so that it will go for supply eligible so that the status if when you go for supply eligible and submit then it becomes awaiting shipping awaiting shipping means the lines which are ready for shipping so this is the status the order address status is booked and the line status is awaiting shipping so if I start entering the new item like let me take you are not allowed to create order because the internet order cannot be created okay fine so this is a this is one of the orders like this you know you have to ship the item and you have to go to shipping and this is the warehouse which is going to ship the item okay now this is another this is one sales order okay now let me go to another sales order and this is one open Okay, this is also internal I want. Okay. okay. Let us take this order. Order also. I will show you some examples. Copy then I want the details of this sales order as well this is the order one this is the order and line details this is the line details so this is the item this is the item the item is same item is same this is the status is awaiting shipping okay and now present the tax code some mandatory fields to be entered whenever it is asking and uh, you can see somewhere the mandatory field so this is what it, no tax let me enter okay now now let us enter the item like you can enter the item like this okay then it is okay now let me save the record let us see
okay oh, this is the best example anyway so this is one like uh, this is the order so you keep this in mind like credit check hold applied overdue invoice found using site credit profile means what it says is the moment the customer has been entered the moment customer has been entered system checks whether this customer is having due amount due amount pre with previous sales orders or not it checks system always checks and that is the concept we are going to learn again that is what that is called as credit check so system always checks whenever there is a customer whether whether this customer is eligible because payment terms is saying 30 days means you can pay 30 within 30 days it doesn't mean that if he if the customer is having already certain orders already he might have taken the items earlier and for which we didn't pay system always checks what is the credit limit of the customer credit credit limit is one lakh let us say hundred thousand and that means one lakh but when you place the new order that order might be for another two lakhs so already you might have crossed the credit limit that means first of all he has to pay the previous sales then only you can get the credit limit then only he is eligible to get the credit orders again so that is the reason credit check hold has been applied for this customer if you want to process nothing can be processed why because there is a hold first of all we have to release the hold this is the concept you know this is the financial concept we are going to learn later but of course we got the error message right away so I am going to show you how to release the holds in the actions whenever there is a hold and we have to release the hold from action so there is a re release hold that is meant for R let me show you once again in the actions if you scroll down that is starting with R release holds this is what we are going to select so credit check failure because this customer is having credit check and there is a credit limit and placing this order may cross the credit limit and which creates overdue so in order to avoid that there is a system check and which checks and in case is not eligible which puts hold finance people take a decision whether this hold to be applied or not really then only they will go ahead like let me do one thing my battery is weak now let me charge it one Okay, now. Okay, I want to release uh, with a reason. Process approval, let us say, let me enter something. Okay, I want to select progress for flow because something has been stuck, then definitely we that will be progress. Click release, all release successfully. Now this customer is eligible for shipping. So, what are the status awaiting shipping? I can proceed with shipping. Save the records. Okay, and there is no change. No changes to save so I can take this order then I can ship it I am showing the simple process of shipping okay here I have to take the order number I have to take the order number for shipping I can go ahead with shipping this is the shipping navigation is go to transactions clear the form make sure make a habit by clicking clear whenever there is a form is having a clear button in the bottom of the form try to click on that then try to enter the order number find tab find the results okay so this is the line we entered newly okay already these lines are processed earlier now this is the line with a status of ready to release these statuses are very important this is shipping transaction status and whereas line status of shipping tra shipping transaction line it, this is the next step which is suggesting what action you are supposed to perform for this particular order so next step is pick release so okay now 
I can go to actions. Next step is pick release. Where is pick release? Let us check. This is launch pick release. We are going to do the pick release by perform by per performing the action that is launch pick by performing the launching the pick release. So that's what you have to select here. Then click go. Okay. When you click go, it runs the concurrent request means we are going to pick release. What is pick release? Let us explain. Okay, let me explain to you. When you click OK and after that this pick release, launching pick release is a functionality of processing something. What is the process? Let us see. Go to view, requests, find what's happening. Let us see. See, the moment I do the pick release, it is going to run some concurrent request. It's very important. It's a very important question. So whenever you are doing the pick release, what are the concurrent requests running at the time of pick release? This is the entry question. Okay. This is the pick selection list generation. So it should initiate the pick release, then close it after once it is completed. Let us see updated status by clicking the line, then press control F11. Okay. See, the moment you press the control F11, the status changes. Release to warehouse. Transact move order. I told you, we are doing from sales. Means we are going to reserve the item against the customer. So I have to request to the store by raising a move order. So next step is move order has been created already. That means what is the what is the process of pick release? The pick release is the process of creating a move order so that that move order is nothing but a request to the store to transfer the respective item from the inventory to the sales area. What is sales area? This is always staging. See, if you talk about raw material sub inventory, that is main store. Fancy goods sub inventory, that is also main store. Customer returned item, that is for returned items from the customer due to some damage or due to some problem, service, service, manufacturing defect. Similarly, we have certain sub inventory which is meant for sales area. That means whatever the items to be sold to the customer will be first received to the staging area. Means staging from where we are going to make a delivery to the customer. So for that we have to request the inventory people to bring the items to sales area. From sales area we are going to ship the item to the customer. So in the process, the first step is pick release. Next step is pick release. I did pick release. After doing the pick release, which is showing now, the next step is transact move order. Means it is already the present status is released to warehouse. Means we have created a move order and that move order number to be disclosed to the inventory guy. So that inventory guy transact the material to the sales area. So transact move order, we have to perform. Next step is. That means you should know the move order number. That means move order number should be generated. So where is the move order number? So that's what we are going to see now. This is the order number. This is the quantity. So quantity enters something, but request quantity something else. Why? That is showing that that depends upon unit of measures. Okay. When you enter yards, that might be this requested quantity might be you showing only primary quantity. So what are the quantity you entered in the sales order might be different quantity. You might have entered roles. If you want roles, if you see in the sales order, you might have entered one or four roles. That might be equivalent to 2,772 square yards or yards. So that is how. Okay. Now, I want my MOAD. This is MOAD. See organization code. This is the branch warehouse. It is UTD. It is another another one. It is it is nothing but Utah. Utah. That is Utah is one of the states in America. So from this, like NCD, this is North Carolina is another part of the uh, in the same state we have another part. So from that part. So we have from this warehouse these many items to be shipped. For that, more order request has been generated. This move order request meant for this warehouse. This move order number meant for this warehouse. We have different branches. The same item can be existing in different branches. And from which branch you are going to ship it. For third line we are going to ship from NCD. 
whereas first and second lines to be shipped from Utah. So that's what there in that shipping tab of warehouse. So that is how this move order meant for NCD. Keep in mind, if you check for this move order in Utah, you can't find. You have to search this move order in NCD only. Okay, take the move order number. This is the move order number. Now, the next step is it is suggesting as transact move order. So, I have to transact. So, after taking the move order, the organization code is NCD that you are able to see here. So, I have to switch over to inventory. I have to switch over to inventory. So, go to inventory now. Okay. Now, move orders, transact move orders. It will ask you, what is the sub inventory? I want to transact from NCD. So, move order number I have taken already. Search. That's it. Select this. Allocate it. What is allocation? This is the line pending for transaction. We are allocating means inventory guy. I am acting like inventory guy now. I am not no, I am no more sales guy now. So I am transacting based on there is a request from the sales area that is move order. That move order is getting transacted by allocating the item. What is allocation? It is reserving. We are going to reserve the item to the customer. That allocation is nothing but reservation. Okay. We are going to reserve it. That's it. Transaction completed. So you'll be having transact button sometimes because we've made it automation in your system when you are practicing in the lab. You can see transact. You allocate first, then select the line, then transact it over. Okay. Now let us go to the same order management. Let me go to shipping transaction line. We are going to conclude within five minutes, five to ten minutes. Okay, then order number. What is the order number? This is order number. Find. Is this the order number we did? Okay, let me take. There is a move order. Okay, F11. Okay, line details. I forgot to take the order number. Clear. Let me take. I can search by transactions. I will go back to. I want to know the sales order number. Transactions. Find by transactions. So I did in NCD today's transactions find out just now I did this is the one yeah this is the one yeah sales are the same this is the one yeah yeah I will tell you shipping shipping transactions the order number is this is order number okay now here we did launch pick release. Okay. We have different statuses. So what is the status? If you select the line status as blank, it will show you all the lines which are having different statuses. Again, this sales art. Now let us see. Okay. Earlier we have three lines. Now we have more than three lines. Why? I did third line. You know, the same move order. If you go to move order, see, the move order number is same. We have taken the same move order number. Okay. Why it is having this many lines? Do you know that? Because if you go to lines and the quantity is each one. See, the quantity is each line is having the requested quantity. Each, you know. One role equal to, we selected, have you remember, this is the best example, why I have taken this example, 
I don't know. Luckily, we got all these issues. You know, this 26.66 is the, is the quantity equivalent to one roll. In the sales order, if you see that, if I open sales order, try to understand this. Very important. I will open the sales order. If I open the sales order now, in the lines, we enter this. Have you seen this? Roll. But earlier it was showing 1000 lines, some 2000 lines in the uh, in the shipping transaction. Have you remember? That means there is a conversion between roll and yards. Okay? And there is a conversion between. So, it is showing in the shipping transaction line, it is showing yards. One roll equal to 26.66. That's what it is showing here. That's it. This 26.6 is nothing but one roll. So he, why it has this many lines? Yes, each one is having a different lot. Different lot. What is lot? This is again inventory concept. We have, whenever you are defining item master, is it lot control or serial control? We have different lot numbers getting assigned to the item. And those item lots are getting picked. And we are going to assign, okay, different lots and LPNs, these are LPNs, you know, what is LPN, license plate number, we have all these concepts, no LPN is a license plate number, lot is nothing but, what is the difference between lot and serial number, probably in the next class we will be discussing, we will be shipping the item, but here this is not a serial controlled item, when the serial controlled items are coming into picture, then the scenario might be different, lot control, different, some items may not be lot controlled, either lot controlled, no. Uh, neither no lot control nor serial control then how it has to be so it is lot controlled item so uh, what are the lots to be assigned different lots are getting assigned then it is going to split it and sometimes what happens you know all the right items are having the same lot but pick it from different sub inventories the same sub item might be existing in different sub inventories so definitely what happens the sub inventories are different then lines will be different because each line should show different sub inventory. That is how. This is the let us take one line. The next step is ship confirm. We are reached we have reached to final step. So for shipping we should have a delivery. How to create a delivery? It is very simple. Go to actions again. If you scroll to up, then you can see auto create delivery somewhere. Auto create deliveries. Okay, click on the line, act select the auto action as auto create deliveries then click go delivery number has been created this is the delivery number take to the notepad okay the next step is ship confirm so go to delivery if you want to ship confirm it should be against delivery only so you have to go to delivery tab okay so it is asking some other some other fields also. Why? Because when we are going for this line, there is another mandatory field. It is asking, we got the message. When I click this, you got a message. Click on the detail button and enter the waybill field. Yes, there is a mandatory field. So let me go to let me go to lines. Go to deliveries, details. Is there any waybill number? Let us say. In the delivery, details. Yes, there is a mandatory field. I will enter something variable number is and let us say it is this is the number let us say done so variable number shipment number these are the documentation you know these are legal documents you would require at the time of delivery so I will tell you this is the ship confirm next step is ship confirm this is the final step we have the delivery for shipping this item you would require you don't have the action as shipping ship confirm in the lines you have to go to delivery tab then you can see ship confirm here or you can see from the actions here ship confirm see either way you can do by clicking on this button or by selecting this function and click go okay it will ask you ship all yes I want to print something some some reports to be printed because I want the delivery note or 
I, I want the commercial invoice to be printed or bill of lading to be printed, packing slip to be printed. What is the importance? What is the importance of all these documentation? We will discuss tomorrow. Okay, but for right now, I want to ship all the items, the respective item with the respective documentation. So I am going to select. Okay what documentation to be printed what documentation is getting printed that is nothing but reports so what are the reports getting run you know what are the reports are going to run right now after shipping ship after ship confirm that's what we are going to see and analyze those reports click ok this is the final step of order management delivery was successfully confirmed click ok you request let us see as per the documentation what are the reports getting run see it is running. This is a very important question. What are the documentation? What is the documentation required at the time of ship confirm? This is the document. Villa cladding, commercial invoice, okay? Any labels to be packing slip, packing slip, and what are the label data? And interface trip stop. This is the concurrent required. Reports are only these four. Okay, villa cladding, commercial invoice, packing slip report, and we have Vehicle, vehicle load sheet details mailing labels means vehicle load sheet details like what package and what is the label of that and that label if you scan it what items are there in the uh, the package everything comes that's what so if you refresh the status will be updated completed now let us see this line is closed you go to line it is shipped now for seeing the ship line control F11 that light line might have disappeared. To see that, we have to search by not ship lines. See, you can't see the ship lines not right now. Why? Because line status is not ship. I want to see ship lines only. All lines, like, otherwise all lines. You can see. Interface. This is the line we shipped just now. The final status is interfaced. When it is interfaced, okay, means what? It is interfaced to the AR module so that AR people Receivables people can invoice the customer. That is the main point here. When it is invoiced, I mean, when it is invoiced, of course, this, that line will be closed. At this point of time, for this order, for this line, what is the status? Let us see in the sales order. See, earlier we have only four lines. Now, see. 104 you entered but one quantity has been shipped see it is shipped now remaining items should be picked only okay now it is shipped it has to be closed then only it is it is said to be interfaced with the AR module how it is going to be closed because there is a workflow background workflow will be working in the back end so then only it will it will be closed let us go to inventory it takes time because it is scheduled in it will be running at regular intervals like 15 minutes on or half an hour or one hour or for one day and the evening it will be running so like that we will be scheduling so this request what is that request in the inventory switch responsibility there is a workflow background engine with parameters this is the process we will be scheduling how to schedule I will tell you but right now we have to run this to see the updated status this is what schedule we have to schedule here every day per periodically per day or one day or a certain time like that how many times should I run like that you can schedule but I am not scheduling right away submit no you request find refresh completed okay now switch responsibility to the order management I want to see the order line status now now let me open the order F11, order number, control F11, lines, then go to the line that has been shipped, Share, closed, uh, what is this, this is the order, okay, now awaiting fulfillment, this is, this is the order, this is the awaiting fulfillment, okay, the status is awaiting fulfillment, anything else? to be done there are no eligible activities awaiting fulfillment means it is nothing but we have the concept of it is supposed to be closed but why it is not closed I will tell you this is another concept very important question fulfillment sets are used to invoice all the lines you know this is the concept you know we have the lines we have different lines 
If the customer needs only one invoice for entire order, then it is said to be one line has been fulfilled. It doesn't mean that customer requires invoice because remaining lines are awaiting shipping. We are not shipped. When all the lines are shipped, then only one invoice to be created. At that point of time only, it is the, this is the requirement based on this. We are going for fulfillment. Fulfillment set is nothing but fulfillment set decides the quantities, the items to be invoiced against a customer in a particular sales order and what are the sales order lines you entered system has to make sure all the lines have been shipped then only those lines are getting closed and those lines are eligible for invoice until and unless you have shipped all the items in the sales order lines it is not eligible for invoice that is called fulfillment set awaiting fulfillment means remaining items to be shipped it is waiting for remaining items to be shipped. Then only we can raise one invoice against this customer. That's it. And it is so we started by 10 o'clock, but we are not supposed to start by 10 o'clock. We are supposed to start by 9.30. So people are arriving very late. So I would request be punctual, try to reach by 7 o'clock so that we can end the class end of the class by 11 o'clock itself it's 11 30 now in 11 35 in america for my location so it is so be punctual be there by nine o'clock sorry seven o'clock in the morning okay